Well, congratulations, everyone. That was a hell of a premiere. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Well, let's start with Manny and Evan. You know, we've, been, we've talked before, but you know, I'm going to go with the beginning question. Why did you decide this was the right time to bring back 24? Well, the funny thing is that we actually didn't. We had this idea, you know, this idea of, of uh, that really suggested itself from, from the, the, the Bin Laden raid and the idea of, of these six guys who, who went and did this heroic thing. And there was the, there, there's all these articles. And I remember one of them, some, one of these guys, they had to go into hiding after they did this. And one of them was asked, asked the FBI, what do I do? Uh, now that I'm in hiding after I've killed Bin Laden, and the FBI said, well, you, we can get you a job as a truck driver. And that, that to me, was a, was a fascinating idea about these guys who had done this incredibly heroic thing and now had to live, go, kind of go into, into regular lives, and nobody knew what they did. And from there, it kind of, the, the next question is, on, on, on when you get ideas, is like, well, what if one by one they started being picked off? And then if they... Uh, Somebody had given them up, and so there was a conspiracy, and suddenly we had this, there was this idea in place, and originally it was another series. We weren't planning on doing it tw for 24, but the more we talked about it, the more it seemed like it fit great into a real-time concept, and so we went to pitch it to Fox, and Fox, I mean, they weren't, they were like, okay, well, uh, we'll listen to it, but we pitched it to them, we wrote the script, and they ended up really loving it, and, and, and uh, it, it uh, worked out, and here we are. But it also meant building a world without Jack Bauer. So you created this wonderful character of Eric Carter. Talk about creating the world of Eric Carter. You know, it, it, it was a challenge to have a character that could do the things that we needed the character to do for the show, but was different enough. And I, and I, I think there was quite a bit of trial and error. And we, we tried more reluctant versions of the hero that didn't work. And um, we just we tried a bunch of different places. And we then we, we came up with the idea of this of this guy who had come out of the uh, uh, of the army, but he 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 had a he had a uh, came from a disadvantaged background, and you know he had a brother who was still involved in it, and then it just kind of went boom, and then you ask yourself, well, why did this guy choose this path, and the brother chose this path, and and the, from that came the woman that was sort of between them, and uh, it just clicked, but there was a lot of false starts. Because I mean, I, one of the, someone at the network at one point pitched, "What if they were so worried that the character would be too much like Jack Bauer?" They said, "What if this character doesn't even know how to fire a gun?" And and we said, "Well, so it's a comedy, <laughs> right?" So there's a lot of input to deal with, but eventually we we came up with what's there. Well, speaking of knowing how to fire a gun, Anna, you did a very good job with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How did you become involved with the project? Um, I, I auditioned for it. It was a pretty traditional way that I, that I got um, involved. Um, I was sent the script, and Corey was already attached. And I had just seen Straight Outta Compton. <laughs> right, right. And he was the one, when I left the movie theaters with my girlfriends, I was like, who is Dre? <laughs> and how do I like, get to know Dre? So, um, <laughs> and then lo and behold, you know, the universe really... Um, you figured it out. <laughs> the universe took care of that for me. So, um, yeah, so I was so excited that he was attached to it. And he's just such an incredible talent. Um, and it was just a dream come true to be able to play opposite of him. Yeah. And Ashley, I know that you were a fan of the original 24. What did it mean to you to be a part of the new birth, of, the new rebirth of 24? Yeah, um, I was a fan of the original show. And um, I sent an audition tape from London. And then, um, yeah, and then I came out to meet Manny and Evan and have an audition. And it was like, it was long. It was like 50 minutes long. I was really nervous because it's one of my favorite shows. So for me to be part of it was like, it was a, a dream come true for me, really, honestly. It was actually a terrible audition because you were, <laughs> he, he came in like all surly and like he didn't want to oh, talk yeah. to us and we're like, what, what is this with this guy? And we realized he was in character. Yeah. So, so it wasn't until after he left that we were like, oh, okay, cool. But, uh, no, he, we, but to we, tell you how much of a 24 fan he is, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything because it's out in the news, is that we told him Tony Almeida's coming back and he went, ah! <laughs> he, jumped, he jumped up. Yeah, with that, we, we, that, that role was, we were not having luck casting it. And Ashley did a self tape from London. And how, how close were you to the iPhone? <laughs> he was like this. I do, my, I do my tapes on my iPhone. It was like and a so Skype gone bad. We saw it and we were like, 
this guy's awesome. And you know, you don't fly people in from London for an audition unless they're awesome. And he came in and he was in a leather jacket and he just- Varsity, Varsity. Varsity yeah. And then when the audition was over, I, I, I remember, you know, I think he was also worried about his accent. You didn't want to say anything you hadn't practiced. When I audition, I just want people to see the character. So if I'm having to play like, you know, like an American street dude, if I come in in my British accent and then I change, all I think the casting directors are going to hear is my British accent. So if I just come in in the character, then all you see is the character. Speaking of casting, as you're thinking about building out 20, the new 24, how much did you want to pay homage to the original 24 and how much did you want to create a whole new world? given that you were you know, thinking about bringing Tony back. We wanted to create a whole new world. I mean, if anybody who saw the DVDs from L Live Another Day, we always wanted to bring Tony Almeida back, Carlos Bernard back. We, uh, so we created this little special four minute piece for the DVD where he gets out of prison, uh, just in case, so we can always bring him back if we have to. And so this came about and, and, and we, we, we figured, hey, let, let's, let's bring him in. What, what, a, what a greater pairing then, uh, you know, Corey Hawkins, who's new to the 24 universe, is a character who's ne who's a, who doesn't know anything about CTU and what, 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 is, what, what it means to go through CTU as an agent, to meet someone who's gone through CTU and come out the other side a as a bad guy, basically. And so these, these two uh, kind of are, are, are really a great mix, and, and uh, it leads to a great uh, conclusion between these two. So, Teddy, as the new head of CTU, can we trust you? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I, you know, <laughs> everything will be revealed uh, in episode three. I feel like episode two, we're still sort of, uh, we have fallout from this, and then in three, you know exactly where uh, my allegiances lie. I won't say anything, i got to be deliberately vague, but... Um, I'm still alive, which you know, is, you could say, is a, is an accomplishment for the head of CTU. It's can, a good thing. Can you we look can we talk after? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you're looking alive and well. Yeah, um, uh, but it's it's that was actually one of the things that drew me to the script because I, I I didn't know I don't know if these guys knew I we talked on the phone and I, I, I they had an idea, but it's fun to, it's fun to, you know to to have it be vague and, and, and to play that as an actor, it's, it's really cool to, to not know, and particularly not to show the audience one way or the other. That was very exciting to me. And Carl, what drew you to the new 24? Um, well, I just graduated from college, so I was just really excited someone, someone wanted me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, so, so I was just really excited that uh, these guys had faith in me as uh, such a newbie. Uh, and, and trusted me so much with the world of CTU. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's a show that a lot of people uh, care for so much, so I, I'm just really honored to be a part of it. Were you a fan of the original? Uh, it came out, and I wasn't... I was three years old. I, three years you know, old. I, I, as I asked the question, I knew that I was yeah, going to regret um, it. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch it, but now I'm allowed to watch it. Um, uh, no, but for the audition, I, I watched a lot of YouTube clips uh, just to get me into it, and, and I watched the first episode. and uh, So I know a lot of it, but I still have kind of kept away from it just so I can kind of create my own ideas of uh, the characters and world and stuff like that, yeah. And Sheila, I feel like I'm gonna set myself up with that same question. So just talk about working with this cast. What has the experience been like on set for you? I, working with this cast has been one of the greatest parts of the process. I just have such respect for everybody who's up here and the people who couldn't make it. Um, like Anna, I knew that Corey was attached from the beginning and I was really excited by that idea of Corey Hawkins being the new Jack Bauer and what that looked like and what that meant. And it wasn't until we did the pilot that I was like, it's not just Corey. Every single one of these cast members are really serious actors that take the work seriously and, and are committed to really bringing it to life and grounding it in reality. And so um, it's been really fun to be with such a group of such like wonderful egoless people. I'm not just saying that because they're here. <laughs> they're all really great. And um, yeah, it was it was fun to, because it's such a heightened universe too. A lot of the scenes are. I know you guys didn't get to see that much of me yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm up here for a reason. Uh, no, but there's there's a lot of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's it's it's really theatrical. It's a heightened world, so it's fun for an actor because you get to like get really juicy scenes. 
So what can you tease us about what's to come for your character? <laughs> Since you brought it up, I've got to ask. Jess, you, you don't know. You think you know, but you have no idea. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> Pretend they're not here. <laughs> And since we're in Atlanta, I have to ask, what did it mean for you to film in Atlanta? What did that bring to the production? Atlanta's so great. I love the people here. I think that was my first. Um, I'm based out of LA, like Teddy and Sheila. Sort New of York, kind of LA. Too. Yeah. Um, the people are so, you know, there's that Southern hospitality. And I was raised in Houston, so it's nice to come back to that. The food. And yeah. the food. I love the, the people food, that the make the food. Two yeah. urban lakes. Yeah. Has anyone... No, no one. It's amazing. Go tonight. It's incredible. Yeah. And it has a really great uh, music scene and art scene. Uh, really different from New York, uh, but still very, uh, it comes out of a, a place that is similar out of New York. And so, yeah, so I, I, I really enjoyed a lot of that as well. And it's also really exciting to be a part of what feels like a, a movement for more production to come to Atlanta. You know, I, I feel like, out, well, outside of New York and L.A., this is where a lot of things are happening. A lot of films are shot here. We have a lot of TV shows shooting here. So, yeah, it feels like we're, we're a part of this, this burgeoning um, thing that's happening here, and it's, uh, it's, it's fun. With other productions shooting, I know we've, we've had some friends come in town to do projects. Yeah, and, and to finally hear, um, finally experience what, what the hype's been all about you know, for years. Oh, have you shot in Atlanta yet? Have you shot in Atlanta yet? And it's, it's great. It's treated us very well, and we have about two weeks left, and then we're done. We've been at it since early September. And what's really cool is we um, went to see the Falcons play. At, um... <laughs> no, don't, don't say we. Don't say we because I had FOMO and they did not invite me. So it is not we. Mm -mm. I wasn't invited either. What the hell? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, we saw the Falcons play at the Georgia Dome. And obviously they're, at, they're playing at the Super Bowl. So we just feel like we're rooting for the city as well, which is really cool. <laughs> Which means you've got a fantastic time slot. <laughs> what does Super it mean to Bowl you to have that endorsement hurt. of the network? We just don't want the game to go on too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's too late, no you know. Yeah. Maybe a nice short game. <laughs> I just have one more question, and then I'm going to open it up to you guys. So get your questions ready, and then we'll come around with the microphone. Looking out at the stage, I see a pretty diverse, inclusive cast. I think that's pretty fantastic. So i got to give props to Manny and Evan. Was that something you set out to do? I really fought against it. <laughs> I, really, I really was against the whole idea of it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Um, I'm still not, not really comfortable with the sore. whole thing. I mean, it was just something that, that we, we really went for the, for the best. I mean, when we wrote the script, it was, it was really straight out of Compton. We saw, we were like, who? Now, okay, well, now we got the script, we got this soldier, we got this young soldier. Who are we going to get who can who's a tremendous actor, who can do the action, who's really great, who's charming and charismatic. And uh, we saw Straight Outta Compton. Evan's wife is the casting director. She said, you guys got to see Straight Outta Compton. And I hadn't seen it because I'm not a rap guy, as you probably can tell. <laughs> but, 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 but I went to see it. But it was a great movie. And then when you saw him immediately, you were like, all right, that's the guy. He's the guy. And he read the script and loved it. And when he, so... so it became this thing. It wasn't like we set out to do this. And I, and I remember, you know, a couple of guys were like, well, you had to go, the, you know, the gang route and all that. But I mean, we, if, if it had been an Irish guy, we would have gone with Irish gangs. I mean, we like the whole concept of a criminal background and the, and the whole thing. So it kind of fit around the idea. And it really wasn't, wasn't designed in any particular ethnic sense. It was just, it's something that happened because we got the best actors. And we, we, we were lucky to get this incredible cast. And it just, it happens to be diverse. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean... I feel bad Teddy's white, kind of. <laughs> I mean, we, we really Just guess, who's the bad guy in this group? <laughs> if he had a British accent, that would just seal the deal. That would be right there. I mean, Teddy's actually the diverse guy. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, no, it kind of was, was uh, from there, sort of organic. I mean, Sheila's character... Uh, Coral's character were not diverse on the page. I, I mean, I'll say in my screen test, uh, so when I got flown out to LA, I was in a room and there's always this anxiety as a uh, actor of color, you're gonna walk in and everyone's gonna look like you. And I walked in and everyone looked different. And it, we, we didn't even look even slightly related. And it, it gave me this really good feeling of like, oh, okay, they picked me 
based off of my acting. So yeah, so I, I, I can definitely say, at least from my side, that they, they Mariana was, was originally Gia, and she was Italian. This, she was Italian. Yeah. 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 Um, after Corey was cast, was Miranda Otto the next one to be cast? Do you remember? Yeah. Yes, because I remember reading. Because I was, I am a Homeland fan, and I'd just seen her do amazing work in the previous season. And then I read that she had joined the cast, and I, and I thought, man. So they have Corey Hawkins, and then they just got Miranda Otto. This thing is going to be. Great if they if they keep and then Jimmy Smiths eventually came on and by the way this is the B team because Corey, yeah. uh, Miranda and Jimmy are are the three that shill for the show and tonight it's all of the, the it's the island of misfit toys up here so we're Aww. no but it's great. It's great. no 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 it's great no. Corey is shooting Corey would be here but he is actually shooting all night he is in a farmhouse somewhere outside and Henry being uh, being attacked by bad guys that's all I can say. <laughs> But Can he's still alive. Hopefully he'll get out. Yeah, I was going to say, don't say too much, man. I know. Well, no, let him keep talking. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> So what, what I'd happened? like to say, sorry, what I'd like to say in terms of the diversity, like even in the original iteration, it had a diverse cast and like President Palmer was an African American yes. and that sort of preceded Barack Obama even. So in terms of like art imitating life, it's very important that shows like this have like a, a, a black hero and will have... Uh, like a, a Hispanic senator, because if you don't see it, if no, if the audience or we as a people don't see those things, then we don't believe that we could be them. So yeah, so that's the responsibility. Well said, thank you. I remember during 24's original run that there were quite a few moments that were quite um, Controversial, controversy to say the least when it came to talking about enhanced interrogation techniques. And how do you feel that 24 Legacy fits into this current political climate? We actually do address that. I mean, in some ways, I mean, 24 ran during the, uh, you know, it started right after 9-11. So it was, it was post 9-11 and, and the country was, was in, in the throes of, these, of this fear that would be a giant infrastructure attack. This 24 Legacy, in many ways, is post-war on terror. So uh, you have a character who has fought in the wars and who has come out of the other side of the wars and is now trying to get on with his life. And, and so there is, there is a certain kind of blowback. And without giving, you know, anyway, plot points, we, ad we address it, in, we think, in a really interesting way this season where, because the enhanced interrogation is back in the news. I mean, it is, with the new president, and, uh, and so, uh, it's, uh, so we're addressing it in a sense of something that was a relic of the, uh, of the war on terror and 24, and how does that fit into this new 24? How does our main character react to it? It was not Jack Bauer. So we're addressing it in an interesting way. I can't give too much away because it's, it's actually, I, I think it comes out pretty cool. But it's, uh, it's, it's something that was certainly a controversial aspect of the original series. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunately or, for, you know, it's tied with the, original, with the original concept. I mean, I think we can say that in the current landscape of this show, torture is clearly illegal. It's, CTU is not s supposed to use it. And later in the season, there's a, a, a discussion, but it's, as opposed to being a character's go-to place, it's really a discussion about the ethics and efficacy um, of it. So it's certainly, I think the other way we look at it is, is, is Corey's character is just a very different guy. It's just not in his toolkit. I mean, that's, there's rules of war. Uh, I think he's naive in some ways. Hello, my name is Anthony Della Porta, and I'm an illustration major here at SCAD. Um, what I want to ask is with he who should not be named as president <laughs> and um, the growing tension between America, Russia, South America, and um, the Middle East, how much inspiration do you take from what's ha going on in present day into the show? Well, we were, you know, we were in, we shot the pilot a year ago and we were in production since then, so there's, there's only so much we can respond to the present day events. Um, but uh, again, without giving too much away, there is an interesting twist that happens this season which is influenced by ideas that were proposed during the election without giving too much away. So, so 
it's it, w w what's particularly proud of this season is, is for, for me is that this season starts off and you're watching it and, well, ye old Muslim terrorists, they're coming back. But as with 24, it's not always what it looks like. And we peel back layers of an onion that reveal different villains, different motivations, that ultimately gets to a place which is, uh, we think, rather interesting. I mean, I like to say that, you know, the beginning of the season, you know, might have been written by Trump, but the end could have been written by Hillary. I mean, so, so it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, it'll start one way, but don't, you, you don't make assumptions because you don't know where we're going. Please join me in thanking cast and executive producers of 24. Thank you.